Coming up on show 707, when is range not really the real range? It's the question, we'll find out the answer today. Also on the podcast, we are talking about the Rimac C underscore 2. The VW IDR is embarrassing, a hypercar that runs on fossil juice. Also, a new Volkswagen IDR road going car. What's the latest on that? It's not going to be soon, but I've got the details. Uh, he and he are focusing on the European market for now and why the Cybertruck got wider. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. This is the edition for the start of the week, Monday 24th of February. Martin Lee here, and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Thank you, as always, to myv.com for helping me make the show. If you're in the USA, check it out, World's First Marketplace. It's all about buying and selling and learning about EVs. It's a great website to equip yourself with some knowledge and maybe even put a car in your garage. Uh, go to myev.com. By the way, forgot to mention... <laughs> I was doing the countdown, and then came the weekend. I got distracted. Uh, we busted through 2 million downloads over the weekend. Wow. Thank you so much to everybody who's ever listened to one second of these podcasts. If that's you, then you have contributed uh, to now well over uh, 2 million downloads of this podcast. And as someone rightly pointed out last week when I was doing the countdown to 2 million, they said, does that include YouTube? I thought, no. Drat! I was counting down how many podcasts uh, that have been listened to. However, uh, yes, this person was absolutely correct. We post the show on YouTube, gets about a 1,000 views a day on there, uh, which is obviously not as big as the podcast. But, you know, some people like to listen to shows on YouTube. Maybe that's you. Maybe you mix and, and choose both of them. Uh, and so I probably did, you know, 2 million a long time ago. But anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for marking that milestone with me. Let's talk about when range isn't the real range. What is the real range of an EV? It's an interesting question. One which was posed to me today uh, as I was talking about the new Renault Twingo ZE with a 22 kilowatt hour battery. Great little European city car. And Renault, for some reason, decided in the press release to put the city range, the city range of 142 miles of range. That is not ah, the range. That is a city test, which is, I don't know, maybe 30 miles an hour and lots of regen. The real range of that car on the WLTP cycled 102 miles. Still very good for a small battery. But the question was raised... What range number should we be talking about? And that fed into a story from a couple of days ago as well with Tesla at the heart of a story of consumer reports. Tesla allows its owners to use more of the battery capacity by switching from daily driving to a trip setting. That's designed to provide maximum range, but Tesla has warned you that using that function can cause battery degradation and that recharging the battery could also take longer. And the Consumer Report article goes on to say that in the trip driving setting, our Model 3 achieved 350 miles. And so, of course, all the headlines that spun out of that was Model 3 now does 350 miles. Always a nice headline, but does the Model 3 do 350 miles? That's the question. Depends how you drive it. Depends what time of year it is. What's the weather outside? And actually, the other manufacturers as well, and particularly one, has had a really hard time lately. Uh, models from Jaguar and Porsche do way better in real-world driving than the EPA tests. A Top Gear test two years ago found that 291 miles on a single charge of the I-Pace was doable, and yet that's 24% more than the official government estimate. Audi decided it was important to increase battery life whilst also delivering what they say consistent performance. The company spokesman Mark Danker said uh, the fully charged Audi e-tron only uses 88% of its battery capacity. Tesla does allow you to access 100% of the battery. So what should the range be? Should the range figure that they advertise be the 100% battery range? But if the manufacturer doesn't allow you to ever access that, what should the range number be when you go into a dealership or you go online and you say, how far does this car go? The range being restricted in the Audi e-tron's case, to 88% of the battery that you're allowed to use does make the battery last longer, and a lot longer in some cases. The Porsche spokesman that Consumer Reports spoke to, Calvin Kim, said that Porsche's cars are known for performance and the on-road capability, and that battery range isn't as much of a factor for consumers looking for a high-speed sports car, but, say the detractors and the Tesla fanboys, but a Porsche only say, well, we're all about performance, not range, because you've got such a stinky EPA number. But is that EPA number of 201 miles for the Porsche Taycan 
even to be relied upon. I've always said on this podcast the the old way that we measured it, the NEDC test cycle. Nowhere near. It was almost double. Then it went to the WLTP test in Europe. And that was a lot better. Maybe off by about 10% in real world, maybe a bit more. I've always thought EPA was the best way of measuring it. And then you learn more about it. Tom at Inside EVs says that he drove the Taycan Turbo. Porsche invited four motoring journalists to go on a bit of a drive in the Taycan Turbo. He drove from Atlanta, Georgia to Daytona Beach, Florida. And he says that even with the cold weather, even with rain, he was averaging... 2.96 2.96 miles per kilowatt hour. It was a 436 mile trip, and if you multiply the consumption rate by the usable capacity, which he was told was 83.7 percent. Oh no, 83.7 kilowatt hours. Then it was 248 miles of range, a lot more than the EPA gave the Taycan. That's not bad, but it's so much better than the EPA themselves said. How does this happen? Well, many people don't realize that the manufacturer does all the range testing. The manufacturer provides the EPA with the range rating and then all the data to back up their numbers. In the case of the Taycan, though, they didn't do that. The EPA decided to do their own range certification, and those numbers came out much lower than Porsche expected. So what should we do? Should all the manufacturers submit the range to the different regulatory bodies and the data to back that up, or should there be one, almost one range rating in the world which tests every EV? Because let's face it, There aren't many of them. The EPA said they can't do it for every single car because they don't have the capacity. So they rely on the manufacturers telling them how far their cars will go. Really? Really? There's not that many EVs out there. Let's face it. It would take me about a week to get through every EV on the market. All right, some have got some different specifications. And all right, then within those specifications, you can have different wheel sizes, for instance, because you'll go further on an 18-inch wheel than a, a 21. But still... There's got to be a better answer to all of this. And that all stems from the headlines only a couple of days ago that the Model 3 now does 350 miles. Not officially, but that's what Consumer Reports got out of their own one. Right, next, a car that not many people will be talking about the range on, and that is the uh, Rimac C underscore 2. The the C2, really. Uh, It's going to be unveiled in Geneva. Uh, It's been rumoured for a long time, but we had uh, confirmation a while ago, actually, that it was going to be unveiled in Geneva. That's not really a secret anymore. That's been a confirmed fact uh, for a long time. How do we know? Well, Rimac launched their own YouTube channel a while ago now. Uh, They do it Mondays with Mate. Uh, So Mondays with the founder of the company. And it's great because he talks to the camera and the videos are brilliant. They have a look round all sorts of part, the factory, the cars, the prototypes. And so he, he confirmed in his own words, yeah, yeah, we're showing off the C2 at, at, at Geneva at the Motor Show. Next week, they will unveil the final form of the C2, uh, the International Motor Show, not just the, uh, the new shape, but also a new name. And in the most recent episode, today's episode, in fact, uh, as it's Monday, uh, today, the 24th of February edition of Mondays with Mate, he says this, the CEO gave us a preview of why there are cameras inside the electric hypercar. So you'll see the front stereo cameras, which are used for the autonomous driving system, but also two cameras that are uh, placed inside the car. So this one is monitoring the driver. This one is looking at the driver and on the road. And the purpose of these cameras is a little bit different. So this one is making sure Uh, that the system knows what the driver is doing. So for example, if you are on a track and use the driver coach system, then if you are not paying attention to the road, the car will not drive you 300 kilometers per hour autonomously. So you have to pay attention and this camera is making sure you're doing that, but also to recognize the driver for safety reasons, uh, for security, if you don't have your key with you and stuff like that. And this camera is an action camera uh, where the car records basically the videos, which you then can share uh, on social media or have it uh, for yourself to analyze your driving later. Unveiling of that, 3rd of March, midday, by the way, midday Central European time. If you are looking forward to that, I'll pop a link to YouTube if you want to follow their channel and watch the full thing. Talking of YouTube videos, by the way, uh, to put the IDR performance into context. This is VW's IDR they made to go around the Nürburgring, to go up the Goodwood Hill and do other sorts of 
time trials. Chris Harris of Top Gear headed to the track to see what VW's electric show pony is all about, says Motor One. Uh, the VW IDR has three motors, two up front, one at the rear, uh, three electric motors linking to two separate battery packs for the perfect weight distribution, and the result of 0 to 60 in two seconds. Yeah. Two seconds uh, and cornering speeds that surpass a Formula One car means this happened. A rather embarrassing result for a fossil gobbling supercar. Volkswagen's no limits racing car is electric. Volkswagen's answer to ultimate power is batteries. That is a McLaren 720S. <laughs> Over 700 horsepower, pretty much the fastest supercar on the planet right now. Remember that. Whoa! Oh my lord! A little bit only like it. I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to uh, read the Motor One article or watch the video on YouTube and uh, and see a, an electric car destroying a McLaren. Fossil car. Talking of Volkswagen then, by the way, and the IDR, that's the one-off car they, they made, the IDR. Uh, Volkswagen is planning an advanced new electric sports car earmarked to act as a figurehead and halo car, if you like, uh, for a limited range of performance-based road cars that are all electric and all called IDR. Going into production in the middle of the decade, says Autocar, so we're five years away from this. It has been suggested that the IDR, they say, could compete against the second-generation Tesla Roadster, which would, been, which would have been on the roads, well, from maybe 2022, the way it's looking at the moment. It has been, uh, it's dessert, as Elon calls it. Dessert is how he described uh, uh, the Roadster. I wouldn't be surprised if that's still a couple of years away. Uh, an internal ID sub-brand strategy paper is calling for a proposed model from Volkswagen to be assembled at the company's Carmen offshoot. And if that happens, Porsche is developing an all-electric Boxster, which we can add to the mix as well. Now, the all-electric Boxster from Porsche uh, could well be based on the Taycan's platform, that's the PPE platform, or maybe an adapted version of the existing Fossil platform. It's very possible as well. They could even use the MEB platform, which the VW ID range sits on. But all of a sudden, Porsche Boxster, all electric, now you're talking my language, had a Carrera 4S for a few days uh, that we had. Just borrowed. My goodness me. I know I know it's a fossil car. It's many years ago, but my goodness me. Uh, we had some fun in that, very responsibly, of course, but that was a fantastic car. Uh, my wife and I uh, had for the weekend uh, to do a few weekend miles. Let's talk Hyundai. And they started the year focusing on delivering electric cars to Europe, leaving its domestic market temporarily forsaken, says Pedro at Push EVs. Due to stricter emissions regulations that started this year, Hyundai needs to increase its sales of EVs in Europe to avoid massive fines around emissions. Therefore, as of next month, in March, Hyundai will start producing the Kona Electric in its Czech manufacturing plant uh, to supply the European market. Until then, though, Hyundai is making all of the cars they can in Korea and sticking them on boats and ships and sending them to Europe. The domestic market, uh, South Korea, in other words, for Hyundai, has been on its backside recently. Uh, recently, they sold two Ionic Electrics in Korea and 35 Konas in comparison to 1,400 Ionics and 3,300 Kona Electrics. They really have just turned the tap off in their home market, sending them all here to avoid those fines. The quicker they can start making them in the Czech Republic, the better uh, supply will be as well, and more people can get their hands on them. The Kona is still a car that I do look at very enviously. 64 kilowatt hour battery, not too big. It's got that crossover shape, I know, but it's still probably about the same height as my Zoe. It's not a big car, but my goodness me, super efficient, great spec, loads of toys. Whenever I see them, I think, oh, they look nice. Not cheap. I'll give you that. Well, Lucid Motors are next on the podcast, and it's selected LG Chem for a long-term partnership because its batteries provide the ideal level of efficiency, they say, and those batteries further optimised by Lucid to exceed the targets that they want for range, energy density, and recharging and discharging, says Green Car Congress. Uh, the battery cells are provided by LG Chem to Lucid, and they uh, have done the deal to lock in core volume production forecasts for the Lucid Air over the next few years, with additional agreements to be announced in the future and special versions of the EV coming up as well. Looking forward to seeing more from Lucid. They're doing good things, you know. 
finally, the Cybertruck got wider. We know that because of an Elon tweet in our semi-regular se- se- section of the podcast, Elon Tweets, uh, where we learn most stuff from Elon's Twitter. Uh, he said, in some prior tweets, I'd said production of Cybertruck would be 80 inches wide uh, the versus the 84 inches at Unveil. That's too small. He says it's going to be around 82 inches uh, coming standard with upper laser blade lights. Those blade lights, a single strip of LEDs, do look really, really interesting. Inside EVs cites the reasons for an 82-inch width on the Cybertruck uh, to be an ideal bed width if it's a, a car, a truck, that is used for putting things in the back building materials, etc. Standard width. Uh, Three across seating is important as well. And towing, another reason why the car being wider can help. All right, question of the week. A brand new one for this week. And thanks to myev.com, we're asking you this. How do you persuade your friends, family and colleagues to buy an EV? In 2020, how to persuade them to go electric? Let me know. Email me. Hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on the YouTube show. There are 235 patrons, and it looks like I'm going to have some new names to read out over the next few days. I'm just going to pop them an email to say hello to them and thank you for their uh, to their their support. And then we can announce them certainly sometime this week. I would have thought before March at least. That's that's when they get billed <laughs> on Patreon. If you're interested in what it's all about, uh, p a t r e o n dot com slash evnewsdaily. It's how you can support your favourites creators if you want to get any of the previous 706 shows they're all in the archive and in the meantime have a wonderful day catch you tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid